After giving more than 30 talk show interviews in Europe, Norbert Heuser, a German entrepreneur, is now here on the Tan Talk Radio Network with his own show, Improve Your Life, covering many total different subjects and introducing many people from all walks of life. And now, here's Norbert Heuser. Hello and good evening. I always recommend books. I never sell books. I have them on my website. You can see which books I read and I felt special, different. And I said, look, read this book. It's special. And here's a book today, the book of the week, again, from a woman. The book is called Wild Swans. Now, it's the book is about three generations of women. The woman who wrote the book, her mother and her grandmother, the three lives of these women in China, which reflects at these times they were living the social, the political, the economical situation in this country, uh, the suppression with uh, Chairman Mao, who was one of the biggest psychopaths in the world. Hitler was a choir boy compared to Mao Zedong. So I highly recommend you to read this book. I have a deep history with China. I was married to a Chinese woman. I had my company in Taiwan, a company in Hong Kong, a company in mainland China. I spent a lot of time there. And uh, finally, I left mainland China and said, never again. Maybe for a visit for a day or two, but uh, no, I'm done with China. I can tell you this from the bottom of my heart. So that's the book, Wild Swans. Highly, highly to recommend. Very interesting. Whether you're interested in China or not, it gives you an understanding about China. And I'll tell you something. If I would have had this book 30 years ago, before I married my Chinese wife, and lived in China, it would have helped me to much better understand the society. Unfortunately, it wasn't available then. Good. All right. So my guest for tonight, without any further ado, is a woman I know for many, many years. I was never married to her. I have to make this clear because everybody thinks every woman I introduced to, I'm married to. I'm not because she's married to my friend, Bobby Bro. And here is Carrie Bro. Good evening, Hello. Carrie. Good evening. Thanks for coming on my show, Carrie. Thanks for having me, Norbert. Now, before we start, uh, or you start, I want to quickly make clear to the people, I know Carrie and her husband, Bobby, for some 20 more years. And, um, and I and my entire family have been um, her, their, their patients. They run a praxis, and I typically go once, twice, three, four times a year with my, by myself or with the family to get a checkup because regardless how healthy we live we always screw up in some area and we're always missing something because this planet is just too <laughs> screwed up and too <laughs> and too bad and our lifestyle which i shouldn't call lifestyle i should call it death style we have a death <laughs> style but not a lifestyle all right so i visit them very frequently very often uh, <coughs> and her husband have um, accumulated such an amount of knowledge and expertise, which became bigger and better and better over all the years. I know them more than 20 years. I watched it and I became uh, a pleasant customer, happy customer patient yes. of these practices, okay? So, um, Carrie, now we had Bobby the other day on the show. Now you taking a particular part in your practice where you feel most comfortable what you can contribute to making people's life better, right? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite different. You know, we both have our own little specialty and because we practice together, there's a lot of overlap. So uh, when you asked me to be on your show, I was really trying to think how I can um, fluff out a little bit of something that was a little bit different. And because there is so much overlap, it just took a little bit to kind of part the waters. But, you know, we both have our specialty, my husband and I, and I think because we work together and we've learned to work together well, sometimes um, you have to have, you know, a partnership and, you know, having a partnership is, is work. You have to make sure that you're both, you can say your thing, but yet you give the other person equal space. So well, I think the, the, point, the point is we, I've been going through this as well to live a good marriage is challenging enough for everybody. Absolutely. Um, but then to work together 24 <laughs> seven around the week on the one roof and sometimes with the patients together in one room and so on, 
it creates additional challenges because you have to be very disciplined, very fair, and make sure that it's all balanced between the two of you, right? That's the goal. <laughs> Some days are better than others. <laughs> well, well, okay, I can say with all fairness, so far you're not divorced, so it isn't too bad. It isn't <laughs> We're doing pretty good, yay. How long do you have your practice? Oh, uh, 35 years, something like that. Wow, that is impressive. Right, so uh, please continue to explain um, where you're coming from. And all right. So with my side, um, I'm going to give you a little bit more of the feminine side, you know, because I, I wear many hats and, you know, we put in the clinician hat. So my goal when I, when we see people are, is to one, deal with the problem. And a lot of times people come in on the physical level, whether it's pain or something, some condition that they're concerned about in their body. So the first step is always going to deal with the physical level because that's, that's what we're dealing with. You know, we got this this being here that you've got to keep maintaining as best as you can day to day to day to day. Make sure you don't don't mess up too bad. So my my thought or my point is then, okay, I've got this person here for one hour, maybe two hours, um, which is I think a good a good long time. Um, you know, going to see a lot of other healthcare practitioners, they're not seen that long at all. Well, so, we all we all know that a typical. Uh, doctor, so to speak, or practitioner, uh, runs under seconds, not under hours. Maybe minutes, if we're lucky. Uh, maybe two <clears> minutes, <throat> maybe five minutes, maybe three and a half minutes, and then you're out of there. It's like an express train. Yes, and, and I can attest to that. Uh, you give the patients time endlessly. I mean, you know, one, two hours is regular. That's important because you need the time to assess the situation. First of all, I'll listen to the person, listen to the patient. What are they telling me? What is their problem? And then my side, and I guess we'll, we'll unroll this as we go on through our lectures. I'm already feeling what their problem is. I'm already intuiting and looking at them with psychic eyes. I mean, I'm seeing the physical part. I'm seeing all of that kind of thing. I'm looking at the muscles that are out of balance. I'm looking at the lines of their face. I'm looking at if they're fidgeting or if they're calm, I'm looking at all that stuff and taking it all in. And then after we, we deal with a lot of the physical parts, we might do the muscle testing and corrections and whatever they need on that level. But then I like to then zero in while the, while the situation is fresh. And a lot of times when, when the patient is upset or in pain or they're, or they're at a bad state, that's when we can really make a, a lot of progress. And that's when I like to help them clear up why they get there. Why'd you let yourself get here? Did you know you let yourself get here? What what conditions are? Are you are you forgetting about yourself? Are you not caring? <clears throat> are you stressing, pushing? And then what's behind that? It's like, okay, so you had to do this to get to this event. Well, what's behind that? Who where who's pushing so hard? Who's stressing? Is it you? Is it somebody in your past? Is it, you know, that's pushing you or is it you doing it? So whatever it is, we start to calm, to, to unravel it. And that's when people get a lot of ahas. It's like, oh my God, I always do this. Or I it's something do a typical doctor doesn't do. Say a, doctor, again. a typical doctor doesn't do that. He doesn't ask how you're doing in life and what's going on. Oh, you have headache. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Get the pill, two pills a day. See you in two weeks. Exactly. So we're not treating the uh, carcass in front of me, you know, the the, bo the meat body, the, the, the pile of flesh. I'm interested in the soul behind that. You know, it's like I want to look into somebody's eyes and I want to see their soul. I want to see what what's going on. Why? Why is this happening? And how can we get things better for you? Do you even want things to be better? So, you know, we start there and then start to unpackage that. So with that, when you say that, do you want to, to, to have things better? It's interesting. Uh, everybody thinks that everybody wants to become better. And I met two type of people. One, you know, I'm a life coach. I'm not a doctor. I don't have a practice. And um, I met two type of people. One person, the type of person who wants to be sick and takes this as a something to get pity and to get attention. Right. right? And right. you can't get them to become better. And believe it or not, I have had a gentleman who I asked where I had the right procedure 
to make him get him out of this. He had a heart problem. And uh, he was so obstructing that I asked him point blank, do you want to die? And he said, yes. And yeah. two months later, he was dead. And that's OK. You know, that's so we have to get off the highway somewhere. But sometimes we just have to realize that. If that's your choice, it's your choice. Exactly. But what we're talking about here, we have choices. The problem is that many people, I think you agree, are not aware of their choices. Exactly. They, they have an illness. This is God giving. It has nothing to do with me personally. It came down on me. You know, I got covert because it came down on me because somebody was not wearing the mask. Uh, and so I got COVID, right? Or I got this or I got this and the other. Um, I usually say no accident goes by accident. Behind everything is a plan, whether you see it or responsibility or not, that's not the point, but there's still something going on. Exactly, exactly. So part of that is, is you know, we do a lot of, of what we do is educate the person. And I don't wanna make somebody wrong about something. I want them to figure out their mistake. You know, so I'll shed light on it. It's like, well, you know, where did that come from? Who first told you that? You know, and you get them thinking. So it, it gets them to think, well, gosh, my mom used to always say that. Or my ex-wife used to tell me that. And I was like, whoa, well, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's go explore that. So up comes a bunch of things. And then a lot of times they'll get revolution or some resolution and ahas. But what I like to do is then correlate it's kind of like tracking down like um, how everything's correlated. So part of what we do is, and part of what we've done maybe before that is tested certain muscle groups. And maybe I'll see like, um, maybe with somebody it's an adrenal problem. And I'm like, all right, you know, got all these adrenal muscles weak, okay. And you're in stress and you're in fight or flight all the time, okay, well, what is the emotion like behind, you know, the adrenals? What is, why are you pushing so hard? Um, and, and why is that? Or what if we have a situation where somebody's just angry and pissed off and they've got a toxic liver and we've got all the muscles showing liver problem, liver, liver, liver. Well, the liver's dealing with whatever anger or situation is unresolved and it keeps coming up. So I start pressing the buttons. I know it's like if I got all these liver muscles, okay, I can tell them, yeah, we got to do a liver flush and we got to put you on these liver nutrients and help the liver detox. Okay, that's level one. But now, why are you so mad? Why? Are you, where did that come from? What are you suppressing? What? Why are you pissed off? Sometimes when you start telling or saying it for the person, sometimes somebody has a hard time saying, I'm pissed off. But if I say it for them, I go, why are you pissed off? Or if I were you, I would be really pissed off. And they would go, oh, yeah. And then they then they engage. Then they can start talking about it. And I was like, okay, good. I hit a hot button. Now we're getting somewhere. You know, so now comes up a lot of stuff why they're mad, why they're pissed off, who they're pissed off at. It's like, okay, good. This is the healing. This is what we need to, this is what we need to look at. Not just so much. I mean, we figured out how to help the liver deal with all these emotions, but we got to get uncover what's behind it. So part of it is knowing that logically and then using my intuition, the female side, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, um, to unravel that, to get at those emotions, to start um, giving some resolution on many levels because we're we're a many leveled being. You know, we're, we're, we're physical being, we're an emotional being, we're a spiritual being. And they all kind of play in our daily fare. And sometimes one part takes over. So we really need to look at all of those. So that's my role of what we do. And within that, I also help the person look at their daily life. It's like, all right, we need to feed yourself. Oh, and you eat out all the time. Well, maybe that's a problem. Well, can we make, can we make better choices while you eat out? You know, you got to start somewhere. I'm not going to have that person be a gourmet cook and go home and cook for themselves if they don't want to, or if they can't, or if they don't have the information, but they can learn to ask for better foods, go to better restaurants, eat, you know, make better choices. So you just have to start where that person is. And that's part of my goal as well is to make their daily fare, give them more options to make better choices to then have better health. Do you find a basic difference 
and, and, and as a general basic difference between the reactions of women or men uh, towards, let me call it, emotional level, uh, being yourself, being uh, being allowed to be yourself. Because don't, don't, let, let's not ignore it. We live in a man's world. There's yes. no question. We live in a yes. man's world. So if a man has a challenge with his body, with his uh, illness, with his work, and so on and so forth, all women have one additional challenge at least, or two usually. One is they usually take more responsibility, to my observation, for family and for children than mm -hmm. men do by, by tendency. Mm -hmm. And secondly, um, it's a man's world, so they are threatened and challenged by another issue, which is the man's world, which is not very nice. No. And now it's upside down because now men are being made to be wrong and um, they're being they're being demasculinized, I think. So the, the, the man's world is being pulled apart. So men now are are, are like having to um, I think it's even more confusing for a man. But until more recently, I think, you know, being in a man's world, a woman had to wear pants, had to be the business person. You know, the, a lot of the feminine ways had, you know, we had to conform, like you said, to the man's world. And now our world is just, it's just so strange, you know. But I think now men are being made to be wrong and to be demasculinized. So I don't think it was the choice of a lot of men. I think in the mainstream men, I think it was men at the top that kind of perpetrated these um, situations, these social norms. Because most men, when I actually start talking to them and get them, you know, alone, you know, I'm not, you know, like in their practice, they don't have maybe their wife is there or um, people that they're unhappy with. Once I kind of get them away from that, then they're able to emote and to go there. But it has to be a safe place, and they have to feel comfortable with the person they're talking to. And again, I, always, I make I them wrong. That, either. I always found that men were carrying more of a guard around them. Of, Absolutely. Of Okay, while women were much more open and more vulnerable at the same yes. time because yes. they were easily putting their emotions out, which the men always blame them for. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's my personal opinion. If this world would be run, this world is run by men, no question, full stop. Whether we have a vice president, female or not, that's not the point. The <clears> world <throat> is run by men. The industries are run by men. The politicians are run by men. Yes. Uh, even most of the sports club and whatever. I believe, I'm a strong believer that we're missing a feminine side in our world with intuition and with uh, feelings and with responsibility. I would prefer tomorrow, 60, 70% of the world would be run by women. We would have a more sane, more healthy, more peaceful life. I agree. <laughs> and not just because I'm a woman. I think there has to be a little bit, well, women are, are wired more, I mean, there's more neurons, women have more neurons, more neurons go into the skin, more neurons to feel. So I think- You want to tell the people what neurons are, what their job is. Okay, the, the, they're like the wires coming off of our spinal cord to innervate everything. It's like our little feelers, you know, they're, they're, they're coming off and they're, you know, coming to our skin. They're, that's like what makes everything happen. That's just like kind of real, real quick way to think about it. Okay. So, if, if women are, are more wired, you know, we got more receptors, then we're more attenuated. We're more, we have more receptors. We have more like little, little collectors picking up on things, more perceptics. We can pick up more subtle things than men. Men are kind of, they, they were more linear in their thinking. I got a problem, I'm gonna solve it. Boom, it's done. Women might need to go around and you know, gotta do this before we can do that. And sometimes that circuitous route solves the problem faster. Sometimes you can't go in a straight line and solve something. So well, I, this, this is where the the the, the uh, intuition comes in. Intuition comes in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because we're more sensitive. I'm gonna use that word too, and we're we're wired more sensitive. So we can pick up on things a lot easier. You know, man is is got to have those masculine um, features and, and masculine perceptics and and um, and get things done in a linear way. Women and our, but our world is much more complex. So I agree with with that. 
But within that, everybody needs to balance themselves. We need to balance both our male and our female sides. Ultimately, you know, the woman needs to, you know, get a little chutzpah, get a little testosterone and, you know, which I think is happening a lot. I think a lot of women are becoming more solid in their um, conviction about things in their uh, going forward. They're not so timid. And um, I think men, I feel sorry for a lot of men right now, actually, because I think, you know, being de being demasculinated is not the way to make men take a back seat. So, but no, it, 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 needs, a, it needs a change of mindset. Yeah, um, you're gonna cut somebody's balls. That doesn't exactly. make him feminine, okay? Right, right. Um, excuse me if I say it in blank, but it doesn't make him feminine. It's a kind of inner perception and inner condition and um, allowing emotions to be lived and to be shown. And that's the biggest problem. Usually men are trained from day one not to show emotions. And there you, you see, the world it turns around by personal relationships, not by a Mercedes factory where 500 men are working day to night. They can make a nice Mercedes car, that's fine. But their life and the life of the family, of their own families and others is decided by the emotional contact, not only to the wife, but to the children as well. And I see very much when I look around that typically more women have a strong relationship with children and children tend with their emotions to go to their mother than to their father. Besides being born by the mother, it's just that men don't let their guard down and don't show a normal size, which should be masculine and feminine. Right, right. And um, for a man to be vulnerable is actually very strong. They don't see it that way. No. No, they don't no. see it that way. No. You know, it's like admitting mistakes, you know. People don't want to make mistakes. And you can only grow by confronting and admitting mistakes and go on and don't do them again, right? Exactly. So in your practice, uh, as half of our time we have spent, we have not come to, I guess, the main point of today, which was intuition and the pineal gland, right? Mm-hmm. So being, being, having said all that, <clears throat> looking at how how intuition works it's knowing something without knowing any reason why you just get an answer and um being able to trust that without being led by your mind reacting or overreacting it's like you get a, a, i would say it's where we we trust our gut it's our gut feeling i would say that's maybe the one of the best ways so so is it our gut is it our you know our pineal um, yes, it's it's all of that. It's this connection. It's hard to differentiate it. Where well, let's, that happens. Of second, let's step back for a second because I believe that a lot of uh, 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 viewers don't know what the pineal gland is. Right. If, if I may, uh, if I could blend in a photo. Absolutely. And, and that the pineal gland is a very small pea sized uh, um, gland which sits in the middle in the center of your brain and it's about where it sits right which yep. I'm showing here that's another yep. perspective okay that's the penal gland and to my experience um, most doctors most doctors have no idea what this penal gland is all about and how important it is it's most likely the most important gland of we have I would say a lot and then a lot of people that have done more esoteric studies call it the seat of the soul you know, there, we have our, our subconscious mind and we have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind is, is huge. It's aware of everything. And our conscious mind is this like this little linear thing trying to make sense of everything. I think it's kind of like, um, get the, the thought in my head of uh, a little boy looking through a hole in the fence, like at a parade <laughs> and all he can see is just the one thing that's in front of him. He can't see the whole parade. So it's like our conscious mind is just focused that little bit. It can't see it all. But the subconscious knows it all, feels it all. And So the, the pineal gland, to make that complete, by definition, um, uh, looks like that. You it's know. like a pine cone. Yeah. It's, it's like. A pine cone, but it's only like, uh, <laughs> like a pea, the size of a pea. Right. And the, and the interesting part is that. In previous times, 
in many old, uh, very old times, people, good people, were aware of the importance of the pineal gland. Yes. Nowadays, basically, no doctor is. No. No doctor is. And the pineal gland is a big decision how you live your life. Yes. Mentally and, and physically. And it's responsible for the communication between the conscious and the subconscious. So it's, it's that communication that has to go between that. You know, we can't be totally logical and we can't be totally intuitive. You need the blend of the two. I mean, it'd be nice, but it, it's like it's, it gives us that conduit between that subconscious and that conscious mind. How important it is, here I have a picture um, about 3,000 years old. Uh, oh, we don't know about the Anunnaki, uh, what, who the Anunnaki's are. That's a different theme for a different show. But this is a uh, something, a piece of art which is 3,000 years old, and the guy has in his hands, where's this panel? And here is an enlargement. So, and I doubt he's just picking up a pine cone. <laughs> you know, they don't pick up a pine cone, put in the hands because got nothing better to do. And here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Um, the pine cone as a huge monument is sitting in the Vatican in Rome. Look at that. I'm showing this to make people understand, which they don't know. And you can ask every average doctor, he cannot explain to you. It is the most important gland you have and uh, most important than a lot of other things you have in your body. And why does the Church of Rome has a monument uh, <laughs> with the gland? Exactly. Uh, it shows you the importance, right? Yes, yes. So I'm going to just give you a little, I don't want to get totally into the whole biochemistry of it. That's, you know, it, it's a little bit, you don't need to know all that. But I want to just give you a little rundown of, some of that, how that works. So we, and it also, that, that pineal gland, not only is it giving us the conduit between the conscious and the subconscious, but it also is, sets our circadian rhythm. It tracks the sun. It is part of what makes us know time. It's our internal clock as well. And when we see the, the rays of the sun in the early part of the day, they go into our eyes, into our retina, and then the, the retina then gives that information to the, um, it's the, another part within that, the, um, what is it, the SCN, the super chiasmatic nucleus, I believe is what it's called, but it's this receptors inside our eyes, inside the retina, that is receiving those actual photons of light. Those light is actually going in there, and it's starting that process. So, what happens in the early part of the morning is when then the body starts to make um, make melatonin. It's that, that sun rays that start the production of being able to make that. So the body's making melatonin during the day. And if it gets the right signals of light, especially in the morning, it will then be able to release that later on during the day. You know, when in the after the day, then that that the levels of making that fall, and then the body starts to utilize it, it, utilizes it to then be able to go to sleep. So that there's one kind of whole process of how that works. Can I stop you for a second? Yes, you can. Um, I think you have a picture you, too. You, you, use, you use now two, three expressions, which a lot of people do not know. Uh, I blend in here an image just briefly uh, of the circadian rhythm. Thank you. So if you give us a bit of an explanation, a quick one, what does yes. it do? Good, good picture. It, circadian is, is uh, the sun. It's tracking the sun, the rhythm of the sun. It comes up, it goes down. We have light for a certain amount of hours, and then we have darkness. And the light increases until June 21st, and then it starts to decrease until December 21st. And then it starts to increase again, and we go through this cycle. So there's times of the day, you know, that we have more, more light. And there's times of the year that we have more light. So your your pineal gland is very important to be able to track this. So we need to track this so we can sleep and we can have rather regular rhythms. If you don't sleep well, <clears throat> you don't do a lot of things well. 
you know, the body needs that time to sleep and we need to sleep during the dark hours. So this, this is this uh, little clock here is, you know, is tracking um, the wake hours and then the sleep hours. And years ago, actually, before we had the onset of the light bulb, whenever that, that came on, um, we slept an average of nine to 10 hours a day. Now we're sleeping seven or so, but people need sleep. People need to sleep and people need to sleep a certain amount of time. We don't need to shortcut it. It's very useful for regenerating the body on many levels. And people don't do that. They We've got light bulbs that make us extend the summer. We we don't get enough sleep. That's one thing. I did, I did a special show with your husband on that, about the light, right? And then yep. you used an expression, you said melatonin. Can you please give us a crash course what melatonin is, how important it is? It, it's... um. I think it's a it's a very very important substance that the body makes it it makes it from it actually comes from tryptophan which makes serotonin which is a precursor to melatonin so this is a, an important molecule that the body uses for many functions detoxification sleep and then um, like I mentioned tryptophan is an amino acid that we get from from um, uh, it's high in flesh foods. It's high in um, um, uh, dairy products. It's it's a where it's a complete. It's a it's a much needed amino acid that makes serotonin, which is one of the neurochemicals that then makes the melatonin, which we need to function. All these things, things we're starting to talk about. But but we basically, to my understanding and my research, basically all of us don't have enough melatonin. Correct, and we have to. And a lot of that again is because we don't get the sunlight. Yes. We try to so, we try to take these pills late in the day, but so you should already be making it. So you got it right there. Uh, Pineal begins begin producing it. Well, it's using it. It it makes it in the morning. It's for making it during the day, and it actually starts to produce it. You know that's what uh, it's from you know using it. So, so if you don't pineal, make so it during the, the day, you don't have nothing to use at night. So the pineal gland is producing melatonin during the night if we sleep well and right, which is the theme of another show I did, and uh, and uh, to boost the melatonin and to give it that give us that rest. We need that rest. And you said six, seven hours. Well, many people turn and twist around in the bed for many hours, which doesn't mean that they got enough sleep. They're exactly. in bed for many hours, but exactly. not really happy. And here's a bit of a picture. Um, the production of melatonin is very high when you're a toddler, in puberty it goes down, middle age decreases. Once you reach 50, 60, 70 years old, your melatonin in your body is down to close to nothing. And uh, people don't become sick because they come old. They become sick because they're unbalanced and they're missing out. We should all become easily 30, 40 years older than we become because we are doing things wrong exactly exactly and look at you said like by the toddler they sleep a lot they have naps they sleep a lot and usually their body is not as uh doesn't have yet our sexy lifestyle you know which we all enjoy it's fluffy it's sexy entertaining we're trying to make the night to a day which doesn't really fly health wise we have these blue light computers. So when women come to you, are you able to walk them through what we're just scratching the surface here? Are you able to walk them through this so they recognize where their where the shortcomings are? I think so. Um, I, a lot of the women that that actually and men, but that come to us. Um, seem to be educated a little bit. I don't have very many people come in that are just um, total newbies to things. People are are um, somewhat educated in certain things, but I sometimes find out that there's a lot of things that are kind of wrong in certain areas or overlapped and that maybe needs to be sifted out a little bit and explained to them. So with women, you know, we've got hormonal cycles that are definitely happening. You know, we've got the menstrual cycle, you know, we've got the, 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 the maiden into the, you know, menopausal years cycles with women and all of those put on different demands with a woman. 
you know, when you're in childbearing years, you've got the whole menstrual cycle and its problems. So a lot of times we have to sort out the, the hormonal surges, the, the moods, the crashes, the bitchiness, uh, the excessive bleeding, you know, all of those types of issues that a woman has when she has her menstrual years. And then the whole bit with either getting pregnant or not getting pregnant, which is all around those as well. Which means to me nothing else than the woman has a higher, much higher level in her body, her more hormones, uh, and what's going on of sensitivity and for being vulnerable. Absolutely. So much more going on. Like somebody said, if you drive a car with 180 miles an hour, a smaller stone can throw you off the street if you hit it, right? Um, right. So I always felt that women are, with all these challenges, which of course some of them feel like a thread, um, but it shows that part, that feminine part, without which this world wouldn't exist. Absolutely, absolutely. So women are, are feeling a lot more. So part of my job is to then get their hormones balanced out um, and then help them, you know, they're usually reacting to something. There's something that's not right. So the, the hormones are coming up and it's like, well, either you're not speaking your mind or something's telling you you're not being able to speak it, you know, it's, and a lot, it, it, it's funny where energy gets stuck in people's bodies. And um, it's, you can just start watching things. Like if people have lots of stuff around their throat or if they've got lots of stuff around their stomach, you know, you can just start seeing these issues and listening to also the predicate phrases. If they're telling you, oh, this makes me sick. I can't stomach that. That's different than somebody saying, um, um, it, it this really burns me up. You know, the, uh, they, they give you those predicate phrases, you know, this just makes me so aggravated or something. You know, so they're, they're telling you kind of what organ level or chakra level they may be blocked on. So well, you said chakra level. can you explain for a second what chakras are? Chakras, um, energy centers of the body, places uh, where you have, um, I, th I, I think it's maybe, well, energy plexus of the body, but give you a little bit more than just energy plexus. There's seven so-called so ones in the body that, that, that kind of come up in their energy constant concentrated energy levels of different uh, uh, areas so we have different centers in our body of every center is a chakra yes that'd okay. be a good way to put it and there's core that correlates to colors and sound and frequency the higher you get the the uh, you know the, the colors start with the lowest would be red the higher it gets would be more of the, the violet or on the top the frequencies would get higher you know, because now you're doing like the upper ones, you're dealing with the brain, you know, this part, as opposed to dealing with the lower ones, which is more survival or nurturing level. So now, now I remember that you guys, when I visited you last time, you were talking about sound. I mean, this world is based on frequencies only to my philosophy and what I teach, right? And um, we have frequencies only and uh, sounds are frequencies, uh, colors are frequencies. People in general, I'm not aware. They think they live by steaks and salad um, <laughs> and a bit of water, which is usually bad. Um, there's more to it. And this is down to frequency. And you guys have a, a frequency table I saw last time. Yes, yes. Um, because we're really moving into a, a crazy world, we need more tools. We need, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with, I mean, not only do we have the 60 cycle electromagnetic fields we've been dealing with, for years in the lighting and now computers and cell phones, but the amount of frequencies are getting more and more. We have, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the frequencies of the, first of all, our cell phones, um, we're getting into 5G now. We have um, different towers um, that used to be just a cell tower. Now we're having more uh, 5G towers being put up in different places. We have routers, Wi-Fi, um, uh, baby monitors, uh, gaming consoles, security systems, GPS, on and on and on. GPS smart meters. But let's step back to your t to the table. I wanted the people okay. to. Okay. So yeah. So so all those frequencies are harmful. 
And when we test people, we find that the whole the whole way the body's functioning, because we're very electrical. I mean, we are electrical beings. And if we're in this sea of electromagnetic pollution, uh, frequency pollution, let me put it that way. We, we all kind of know what pollution's all about, and we know food and water being polluted, but we are in a frequency polluted environment. So we created a table. It's basically, a, it's a massage table, and we have transducers or speakers uh, mounted at specific places in underneath. So when you're laying on it, you actually feel the vibration of the table. And we have hundreds or five thousands of different frequencies. Okay, that I make, make this clear that people don't get scared. It's not, <laughs> like, it's not like an electric chair. No, you know, it's like a... Well, you showed that you're jumping. You know, sorry. The chair. It's a speaker and the, 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 the frequencies are very soft. They're not uh, aggravating. No. But you can dial in different frequencies, and these different frequencies have effect on different problems you have with your body to 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 handle them. Absolutely, it's like laying on a big speaker. Like if you had a big speaker, you turn it over and you made it soft, and you lay on it. All right. So it, we we um we're, we're distributing these as well. But we, as a clinician, we have the different frequencies that we can have you lie on, which will calm and, and and restore balance to your electromagnetic field functioning because you, so let's, you say, have let's say somebody has a liver problem right okay so uh as far as i remember you have different programs so you can dial in the program which is specific frequency to help the liver absolutely okay. now this gets into some really cool medicine because it's more than taking a pill a vitamin uh, vitamin A or milk thistle. I mean, that's all well and good. And I might also send the person with some of that, but what's behind that? You know, I mean, if we looked at the liver, it's, you know, mostly empty space. Once you start looking at quantum physics, most of us is empty space. The distance and all that is, is huge. So if we're able to affect that matrix that is in the empty space, it, it restores balance. You can you can see that it's called cymatics. You, there's a lot of pictures on the internet where, or there's some different videos where the uh, this was the, some of the early experiments where somebody took a bunch of iron filings and put it on a you know on a plate you know, like on a dish here, and then they put all the the iron on there, and then it vibrates at a certain you know frequency. And if the if the vibration is inharmonious, it makes a gross looking pattern. And then if the vibration is harmonious, it will actually pop into a beautiful geometric shape. You know, it'll be like a, I don't know, I'm just showing you something, you know, something that's regular or something that's uniform by the sound. The sound will actually make those little filings make this beautiful yeah, shape. I will, I will show it. I will blend it in the show that people will see it now. They have seen it now as we yeah. speak. I have shown it. But back again to the table. Now, do you have programs which are specifically helping women, for example, if they have strong problems with a period? Yes. Fibroids, period, period pain, uh, childbirthing, menstrual situations, um, all kinds of women's issues. And then the emotional issues, too. It's like, are, you know, are you are you not caring for yourself and caring for others too much? Let's let's restore some balance to this. And, you know, there's, there's, um, if it's a physical problem, we can again, put on the liver program, or if it's, you know, we might just need to work on the DNA repair or restore balance to, you know, re melatonin production, sleep, um, you know, we, we could stack many different levels. So as a person is not only getting other treatments that we do, they can be getting that as well. And this is what we feel is going to be some of the medicine of the future where people, you know, we're going to be going out into these electromagnetic uh, disturbance. Everywhere you go, you could be in an electromagnetically disturbed area. So you know, when you, you get home, you, are, you, are. you, are. you already you are. are. Exactly. In, in your own house, own house, in the church, in the kindergarten, in the yes. restaurant, in the bathroom, in, yep. a, in the hospital, you are. Okay. You are. And, and the women should know that a lot of their problems they have, like everybody else as well, is created by these electromagnetic radiation, which is 
cell phones, Wi-Fi, and so on. They yes. kill your body and they uh, kill your DNA. Yes. And they kill your melatonin. Yes. So everything you need, and most of us now, the um, pineal gland is worn down. Uh, the pineal gland of an adult does about uh, one-tenth of what it does for a child. Yes. And most of that is because of calcification and of uh, toxic waste and of electromagnetic radiation. means, to be practical, your cell phone and Wi-Fi kills your life. It shortens your life. The pineal gland, strong and healthy, would be able to extend your life by 20, 30 years. Yes, yes. So be having a, a something that can restore balance. You know, you might need to lay on that every day. You know, you know, it, it's like your your electromagnetic environment might go from bad to worse. But you want to make your home as safe and as a, as much of a sanctuary as you can, and then have things to help you restore balance. And one of them is getting that pineal gland back functioning. And like Norbert just said, it gets calcified. It calcified, it gets hardened, and it doesn't work. It doesn't resonate. It doesn't do its job. So part of getting well is one paying attention to regular rhythms. You've got to be paying attention to the sun as much as you can, keeping your body hydrated and, and having enough minerals so we can be fluid. If you don't have enough hydration, we get, um, you know, it, 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 things dry up. Now let's, uh, let's tell the people here, there's a misunderstanding of drinking a gallon of water a day doesn't mean you're hydrated. The volume of the water is not important. And I can tell you that 99% of the people I meet are all dehydrated because the water quality they drink is bad and it doesn't do the job. Uh, the water has to have a certain quality. We don't want to go there. I do a separate show on water. But basically, women, I want you to know that you drink and give your children water in the school to drink and this shitty plastic bottle water and uh, reverse osmosis water doesn't help you. You will be still dehydrated and a dehydrated person can never be fully healthy. Impossible. Exactly. Impossible. exactly. So part of the water, like you said, we could do another whole show on that, but we want it to be as clean as possible and as structured as possible. Let me just throw those words out. So the water has got to be organized and you know, it, you, you want your body, you want it to, your, you want to put it in your body so it can then organize everything else. So there's, you know, you've got devices. We've talked about some of these to help the body do that, but we want the best quality of water. And then we want it, we want to have enough charge or minerals that, um, that you can stay hydrated, you know, so the, the, the part of staying hydrated is having the, the charge of the minerals to stay, to keep the body okay. hydrated. Let's move away from the water. It's taking too much time. Yeah. Only yep. three so minutes. that's one thing. Okay. Um, the pineal gland is responsible to transport your hormones, which are basically created in your gut up to your brain. And Good. We, are, we just we just screwed up. We're just completely screwed up in our life. We are just have everything wrong, everything not the right condition. And the problem is that we are not able to live a balanced life. Right. So part of it is taking the bull by the horns. I mean, you have to start making orders somewhere. So part of it is paying attention to the natural rhythms, you know, getting up with the sun, getting sun exposure during the day. Um, and then as much as possible, going to sleep with the sun. I mean, we may have to, to adjust it for summer or winter, but we really want to try to keep those rhythms as much as possible. That And then correcting, you know, we're in front of our devices way too much. We need to have blue blocking filters, but they dehydrate us. You know, the this type of lighting that we're looking at is also re responsible for dehydrating us. So making sure we're kind of working on that. And like you said, we can talk about that a little bit more in detail another time. But if I were to say, just to kind of quickly go through, you being up and down with the sun, getting yourself more hydrated, and then starting to pay attention to what we're suppressing. Those are some really big things with that will allow your intuition to, to come back. Um, the, problem, the problem is that all these things are not taught in universities. No doctor has been educated in this. And people have to understand, doctors are basically 
most of them, not educated in all that, what we're talking about. No doctors educated in water, like electromagnetic radiation, the pineal gland, and what have you. And as long as your pineal gland is not functioning well, because the pineal gland is sabotaged, killed by your cell phone. You're using your cell phone and you kill your pineal gland. End of the life, end of the story. We always think that we can do what we want, but mankind is extinct because they believed the, law, the laws of nature were not valid for them. Right. All right. A um, couple of things I wanted to bring up too for women to approach getting themselves back to their center because, you know, we talked about like women's hormones can be off, which you know, so a lot of this is suppressing your emotions. And, you know, if we, this is what I find with a lot of women, they get suppressed. And whenever we have a physical problem, we got to deal with the physical problem. Then we get backstage behind these emotions. So if people aren't in my office, what I like them to do is to, you know, when something comes up for them, which is going to suppress their intuition, you've got to look at it. You know, a woman has got to say, this is coming up for me. You know, what is up about this? And you've got to start exploring that within yourself. That's all a whole psychological side. But what can help anyone do that is one, you've got to have these basic things that we need. One is keeping your regular rhythms, you know, going, you know, getting proper sleep, getting hydrated, keeping the, the body hydrated. We talked about water. And you know, like Norbert said, there's, you know, a lot about water, but just having that, that issue of water and then getting yourself to have the proper nutrition, eating regularly. It's important that we have regular meals, regular watering times, regular sleep. Having an erratic uh, schedule is no good, especially for women. You know, women, again, we talked about, we started that we're so highly innervated or we're, we're wired a little bit more intensely. We're more sensitive. So we become more imbalanced quicker. We get more dehydrated quicker we get out of balance quicker, but we are also multitasking at a, at a more level. We're taking in more information and processing more. So I think for a woman, you know, we, the nutritional demands, everything has got to be increased. Women need a little bit more nutrition, need a little bit more sleep, need to pay attention to these things and not suppressing so much of these emotions. It's important when something comes up to ask yourself about it. Why is this coming up for me? Why is this making me mad? Why is this making me upset? And to help deal with this, because that will let your your own into intuitiveness start to flow. You know, women know things already. And I think a big part of that is trusting that. So a lot of times you got to be quiet, listen a little bit inside of yourself and try, quit trying to push it away with something else. You know, women are like, oh, I've got to get the baby to bed. Oh, I've got to make my husband this. Oh, I've got, it's like, whoa, 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 stop. Put yourself in there a little bit first. What's going on with you? What are you, what are you covering up? You know, what are these things that women are doing? So don't we have a, don't we have a world where women, regardless of what you said before about the masculinity of men is being reduced. I don't think it's being generally reduced uh, countrywide and uh, down to the bottom, uh, maybe a bit touched. Uh, that's all. Uh, I see that uh, most women, many women, are suffering of the uh, man dominant, even to the family, or the expectations from the husband. Um, I think that a lot of women are overwhelmed with these uh, ten disciplines they have to fight every day, where a man has only two or three to take care yeah. of. Yeah, and then women feel more. You know, they're, 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 they, we have more, I think, more complex emotions. A man might be more linear, where a woman maybe have more circuitous amount of emotions that are coming up. So getting us back to trusting and helping and getting in touch with our pineal, you know, it's getting calcified. It's, you know, women are doing desk jobs, you know, and they're losing touch with their femininity with their emotions and they're becoming more like a man or more android like um that's why i'm saying you've got to you know to, if you want to be balanced you need to start paying attention to our natural world and not our unnatural world you know we're, we're being put too much into this male 
or um, linear type world instead of a, a, the, the world based on nature, based on- I see, I see this in these, uh, I always watch this and I think it's ridiculous. I see this in these uh, typical career jobs where women grow in then in a company, industrial world, you know, and they start to wear these suits, okay? Mm -hmm. And I look at them and say, how stupid are you? you? You're copying a man by putting on his suits and now you think you are a man or what? Or you exactly. Have, you have dominance or you have authority. You, you, you cannot wear a skirt and be proud that you're a woman uh, or a nice blouse, a nice jacket or a nice whatever, right? right. Why, do you have to, why do you have to copy a man, a man's dress to think exactly. that you are now in a great strong position? I have, no, you're not. You're selling your soul. You're selling your soul. Yes. And I saw the same thing by as a comparison uh, in Africa. You know, in Africa, uh, 30 years ago, um, the African man tried to be Western businessman. <laughs> and in the hottest weather, put on a dress shirt and a tie and sweating all over uh, instead of wearing their casual country clothing, right? Mm -hmm. because they wanted to copy the western white successful business people and they looked to me ridiculous as ridiculous women look to me in a in bank a when I go there and i have the suits there and now they think they're a guy right okay exactly so it's a pity and that shows to me that women don't dare to be feminine they don't dare to a certain extent to be feminine and to be proud of it. And a lot of men don't let them. Right. So getting getting back to that about women, if and then it's like, again, we want to seek balance. You know, we, we have to pay attention to the woman's side and the man has to pay attention to his woman, his female side. Um, so we really need to just establish the balance, but it's gone imbalanced into more of the, the male side and we need to pull it back over to the female side doing so we're putting more attention on our intuition allowing that to to come forth because we know inside of us like when there's different things we have those in, innate feelings and when you're in touch with your intuition when you're well rested when you're hydrated when you feel good about yourself who you are inside i think that's maybe what what balances out people are made to not feel good about themselves and they're trying to be somebody else trying to be a man trying to be this trying to be that instead of honoring who they are inside and feeling good about that. And if you're a woman, you know, it, it's important to be a strong woman, you know, to be a, a feeling intuitive, strong, but, you know, have, you know, being able to lay down the law and to say what you mean, you know, you can be male forceful or, or um, linear or, or like to the point, but you can have feeling and reason and in, um, softer about something so I think a big part of it is feeling good within yourself whoever you are you know you were made divine there's nothing wrong with you you've been made to feel that by our society our whatever's around us so feeling that love for yourself and then seeking that balance and that will allow your own intuitiveness to start you know allowing that to happen to be back in touch with it. Besides that, there's an interesting study done in Europe um, that when you're frustrated, your enzyme production is very low. When you're angry and frustrated, it's very low. Sure, everything's for So they made tests, um, alliance polling test, they called it. And um, in a frustrated situation, you only create like 200 enzymes. In a situation of active, um, you create it up to 5,000. In a situation of having self-confidence and belief in yourself, they created 15,000 enzymes. And in the mental stage of love, of true love, they created 30,000 enzymes. So the enzyme activation and creation was influenced by your mental condition. 
we don't think that's possible. We think whatever, you know, the body does what it has to do. No, it needs your mental support, like the pineal gland. Um, people say that 5G is geared to attack the pineal gland in people, which reduces their life and can uh, even create suicide. We have more suicide nowadays and mental problems than ever before. This is not by accident. I'm sure if we ever get to it, if they don't, if they allow us to get to it, because they have their plans, that there are combinations in our bodies or with the cosmic energy. We are not in tune with the cosmic energy. We're not in tune with what they call the Schumann frequency on this planet, natural frequency. And only when these two are in tune, we have a chance for a healthy, good life, besides the right food and so on. Well said. Well said. Well. Yeah. Yeah, this, this topic is big and it's hard to kind of separate out. I was trying to get more for just women, but it's it's so entrenched in so many layers. Yeah. And it covers well, a lot. Did I? Uh, this show can only be in the time frame, um, can only be to give people an idea that there are things going on they should consider, think about, or come to see you and really go through a program where they really experience and uh, discover what is not known to them and then apply it to their daily life, not only for themselves, but as well for the family. Well said. So having said that, thanks a lot for being on the show. Thank you. Yeah. And we're blending your name and address and your phone number and your email so people can reach you, all right? Thank you. And I trust we'll be back uh, sooner or later with something else worth to talk about. Thank you. It's been awesome talking with you, Norbert. Bye-bye. All right, that was it for today. Thanks a lot for being with me. Um, I love Carrie and her husband, uh, Bobby, and uh, it's good to have them in my life for the last 20 years, and I hope another 100 years we'll be working together, developing ideas and discovering the truth, which most of us are not aware of. And uh, believe me, I'll find every day new truth, stuff I wasn't aware of before, and suddenly makes sense, okay? Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Be good.